happy 2023, everyone, or whenever you're watching this video. This year, I've decided to start things off right. So, without any further ado, here is why I think Kibli is the best character in Wings of Fire. Now, to get this whole thing started, I just wanted to say, if you don't already agree that Kibli is the best character, that's just fine. You don't have to. And if at the end of this video you don't agree with me, that's okay too. Ultimately, who you think is the best character is a subjective belief, and by the definition of subjectivity, everyone is going to have their own unique perspectives. Today, I'm going to try to show you my perspective, and hopefully help you see why I love Kibli so very much. Now, I could spend this time here talking about how he's really funny, or smart, or cheerful, or brave, or <laughs> very loyal, but I'm not going to. Because at the end of the day, though I agree with those things, what makes Kibli such a great character is not them. Rather, it is that despite whatever excuses he may have not to, he consistently and actively endeavors to make the world for those around him a better place. That is the reason Kibli is the best. Now, in order to understand Kibli's character, I think we need to begin with his beginning. He was born to Cobra at the order of his grandfather, who wanted a better heir for the crime syndicate. Cobra held no particular love for dragonettes, and Kibli was not an exception. She abused him, physically, verbally, and emotionally, constantly reminding him that he was a useless waste of scales. By and large, Kibli was left to fend for himself as a dragonette in a cutthroat den of thieves. He had to steal food to survive, and any food he did find he had to hide from his older siblings, lest they take it from him by force. It was, for lack of a better phrase, devastating. To this day, the marks of his childhood still affect him. Just as the scar running across his snout, given to him by his own mother, is now and will always be with him, the voices of his mother and siblings still echo in his head, serving as a constant reminder of how worthless a dragon he is. As a result, he craves power, or perhaps more accurately, he craves the ability to be useful so that he might be wanted. He is driven by a need for the approval of others. He needs them to like him, to see him as someone worth having around, or else what is he, except that useless waste of scales they all insisted he was? Because of his upbringing, he is constantly on the watch for ways in which things might go wrong, and constantly thinking about how he would deal with them if they did. He is hypervigilant for and aware of the feelings, desires, and needs of others. This, at his core, is how Kibli is shaped. But it is not who he is. Who he is is what he chooses to do with those qualities. Kibli always works to brighten the days of others, using his awareness of their feelings and his ability to analyze situations to uplift their spirits when they're down or cool their heads when they're upset. The scene that sealed it for me that first convinced me Kibli was the kind of character worth having as a favorite was in Book 7 when, as Winter's hope begins to fade in their search for Hillstorm, Kibli steps in. Here, just, here's the scene narrated from Winter's perspective. But there was no hope. Hailstorm was gone, as dead as all the other lost ice wings. And now Winter had the same crumbling feeling inside, except instead of a snowdrift caving in, this was a whole avalanche cascading heavily down into his bones. This time, it was even more his fault. He had failed his brother, and then failed again, and again, and again. Stop. Stop. It, Kibli said, suddenly in front of Winter, taking his shoulders and shaking him. I see you going to the giving up place in your head. Get yourself out of there, right now. We do not know he's dead any more than we did an hour ago. What we have to do is keep searching, because he is only definitely dead if we give up and sit here like moping camels. You are not allowed to mourn until you see a dead body. Do you understand me? Kibli continues on, outlining a plan for their search, and in doing so, just so happens to send Winter and Moon searching together. <laughs> Winter puts it better than I could. What kind of a Moon's Dazzled Dragon would do all this for a stranger from a different tribe? Why hasn't he given up? Why isn't he letting me give up? And a couple lines later, he realizes he's letting me go with Moon on purpose. Even though he wants to be with her as badly as I do, but he knows or he hopes that searching with her will keep me going. Kibli, our wonderful, wonderful sandy boy, recognizes the place Winter is going mentally, and he acts to stop it. He knows exactly what sending Moon with Winter is going to do to his own chances with her, but still, he chooses to try to save Winter from the pain he knows Winter would feel had he been allowed to go down that path. This isn't the first time Kibli does something like this, nor... 
is it the last? In book six, he defends both Moon and Starflight at much personal risk, but perhaps even more importantly, he helps Moon realize that her powers are not a curse or a tool to manipulate others, but may instead be a force for good, changing her perspective both of her powers and of her place in the world. In book seven, he volunteers to help Winter with his search for Hailstorm, and, well, as we just saw, was an essential part of that success. In book eight, when confronted with unlimited power, he immediately starts thinking of all the ways it could be used to improve the world and it's not just big things like these, it's little ones too, moment to moment things that would be so easy to leave out or ignore. In book nine, he makes Peril's day better by mentioning that Clay likes her back, such a small phrase, but perhaps the one thing in the world that would make Peril happiest, and Kibli finds it. In book 10, well, <laughs> in his book, he's just constantly doing this. He goes to what is quite possibly the last place in the world he wants in order to save Ostrich. He stops the attempted murder of his awful, awful older siblings, and during his arc's climax, Max, he refuses the one thing he has always wanted, the ability to ensure he is loved, because he knows the world would be better off if he didn't. These are not passive acts of kindness or thoughtless compassion. They are deliberate, active, and effortful attempts to improve the world for those around him. And this is what I see as the biggest distinction between Kibli and others. There are a lot of really, really kind, caring, and awesome dragons in the Wings of Fire series. He is not the only character who would go to hell and back for a friend. For these dragons, goodness, I'm going to call it, is simply a way of being. It is part of everything they do. It is how they interact with the world. Kibli takes that one step further. Instead of this goodness being just part of what he does, he is always on the lookout for ways in which it can be used. He pays attention for dragons who need him to be that good in their life. He is constantly trying to make things better. In doing so, he does not always succeed. Despite what many claim, he is not perfect. He makes mistakes. He has flaws. His judgment is often clouded by his desire to be loved, by his dependence on Moon and Thorn, and by his confidence that he knows what is best. Because of his lived experiences, he is sometimes an insecure, power-hungry narcissist and he has every reason to be. His upbringing was absolutely crushing. Anybody raised under those conditions would be expected to turn out like Sirocco and Rattlesnake, but Kibli doesn't allow that to define who he is. Yes, it leaves him with scars. Of course, it creates issues for him so deep-seated they may never fully heal. Despite that, though, he works to be one of, if not the most kind, positive, friendly, helpful, and noble dragons in Pyria. In a lot of ways, I think this is because he knows what it is like to not have that person, that shining beacon of happiness in one's life. He knows what it is like to live in darkness. And it is because of this that his light can shine so brightly. In this, I think he is an inspiration. He is an embodiment of the idea that no matter what your past is, no matter what your abilities are, no matter where you happen to be right now, you still get to choose what direction to head next. And that we make that choice with each and every decision we encounter, day after day, hour after hour, second after second, that choice is part of everything we do. And Kibli chooses to try to make the world better. When I say I love Kibli, I think people often assume it's a romantic thing, that I am attracted to Kibli. But that isn't what I mean when I say I love Kibli. To me, Kibli is an ideal to strive for, an inspiration to be more than we are, to develop the ability to understand how to make things better, and then to have the courage to actually do it. That is what I mean when I say I love Kibli. And that is why I think Kibli is the best character and Wings of Fire. I hope you enjoyed this analysis as much as I enjoyed writing it, and thank you for watching.